In the Corvair day today, for the last three days, I put new tires on in the back. One size bigger, 225 60R14s. They're not much bigger than the, oops, that's the spare I bought in Pittsburgh. They're not much bigger than the 215s, well, half an inch at most. I just don't have the extra money to spend. And I don't think this tire is going to blow up. I think I just had one bad tire. So I put two on. And I got them one size bigger because they seem to be smaller, they are smaller, than the original 185 or <laughs> 713s. A little bigger. Yeah, it's hard to see with a single lens. I was watching a video this morning. I don't watch too many, maybe one or two a day. Rich Rebuilds. YouTube sends us all the same crap. Scotty Kilmer. He's getting carried away. But Rich Rebuilds was at a Tesla meet somewhere in New England area. I don't know where it was. The guy had a New Jersey license plate in the front window of an Audi with a Tesla powertrain. Now, how cool is that? This guy went bonkers. Some kids took an Audi. <laughs> it's supposed to be a pretty unreliable vehicle. Tossed the motor and put in Tesla powertrain. And it was unbelievable. So what I'm doing here today is I am bleeding the brakes. I rebuilt the wheel cylinder on that side and I put a new bushing in the front and I put a rebuilt drive shaft on with two U-joints and I greased them and this one's got the original 50, what are they, 54 year old, 53 year old U-joints and not much rust under here. This bushing is not bad but there may be an adjustment to do there, an adjustment to do here. These bushings have to be replaced but I put nylon ones on the inside but you're not supposed to put nylon on the outside so I've got to have somebody rebuild these with poured in bushings. What I'm doing now is I'm mitty vacuuming the brake system. You take the bleeder, you clean the threads on a grinder, you put some Teflon tape on it so it doesn't suck air through the threads mm -hmm. and you squeeze your $30 mitty vac which should have barbs where the hose connects to the little nipple on the cup and you squeeze it, you build up vacuum and you watch the air come through the line. I was watching this thing, you know, this is a good YouTube video. As long as my camera has a minuscule amount of space on the internal memory, and I've tried every trick. i got to get on the phone with Verizon and waste an hour with them. But they're geeks and they all have a different trick. And I've had this Midivac for years. I don't use it very often because it leaks all over the place. But it does work as long as you put some Teflon tape on the thread of the bleeder, which is right there. You can just see the Teflon tape. And then you go up front and you make sure you have fluid in your reservoir because twice I was doing this and I removed the cap and fluid, the fluid was right down. Oh, I forgot to cap the bottle. I wonder if this new synthetic stuff is hydroscopic that absorbs moisture from the air. So here's my rebuilt master cylinder that I rebuilt myself. And I put the old seal back and it was leaking, so I put the new seal in. Cheapskate that I am, and let's see if I've stopped that leak in the back. I can't tell now because fluid's run down the side. But what happened was it was leaking internally into the car and staining my nice new carpets. LMC truck. So this thing is licensed and insured. I've got a, an inspection waiver for 10 days and I can drive it to the Stowe, now Waterbury car show. 100 or so miles away. That's where I'll be this weekend walking around the parking lot. Flea market. You got any air in there? I don't know if the air ever stops. I think it just sucks air from around the threads even though I've got Teflon tape on it. So Rich Rebuilds is pretty interesting. I don't watch too many of his videos. I don't have a Tesla. I never will. But that's where the kids are today. They're hanging around the Tesla parking lot trying to make a Tesla powered Audi or powered Corvette or powered Prius or powered whatever. Took a wrecked Tesla. Look at this thing. Talk about wrecked. This thing was wrecked. That's not supposed to be brazed like that. And hammered and welded right here. This thing got whacked at the quarter and they put a new quarter panel on and beat the crap out of the inner fender. That should be a nice smooth area, same with this. Oh well, it's a nice car otherwise. Oh yeah, look at that. That tear isn't supposed to be there, or whatever that is. Interesting. I changed my engine mount today, it's behind this skid plate cover. 
And I did a few small things, put a clamp on here and a bracket there, and there's always something to do on an old car. And I should be working up in the apartment, but I wanted to get this thing ready for the Stowe Car Show. I noticed something else. The damage from that blown tire. Check this out. It pushed up the whole area here. This area is pushed up a good two inches. You can't really see it with a single lens, but trust me, it is pushed way up. I just noticed it here. That is ballooned like an exploded backfired muffler. This is supposed to be flat. This is way up. No rust down there, is there? No, just a little bit of surface rust. Oh, that has to be soda blasted before that gets worse. I vacuumed the area out. I put a vacuum cleaner in there and vacuumed all the crap out of there. Don't want to have any water collecting in there, but that's where they rust. So someone's going to take a nice flat 2x4, push that down. The blown up tire blew that up. That's not supposed to be expanded like that. Interesting, huh? Got my chrome air cleaner lid. Got my old engine mount bolted in. That took me a couple, three hours. You got to jack up the motor and adjust it and twiddle it and whittle it. And this motor mount looks like brand new until you realize that it's brand junk. Yep. So what time is it? Just a little after eight and it's getting dark here. My buddy in Scotland tells me it gets dark at 10 o'clock in the summer. Ha! <laughs> here you're lucky if it gets dark at nine o'clock. Alrighty. Oop, look at that. Got my wheel center cap. I wonder if I forgot to put a center cap on one of my wheels. Maybe that one right there. Yep. Got to put the center cap on that wheel and replace that brand new spare that I was lucky enough to buy and lucky enough to get to Flynn's Tire Shop in, uh, where were we? Pittsburgh. In uh, Green, uh, uh, oh boy. Doubletree, Green, Greenleaf? No. Hmm. Greenfield? No. Hmm. Forget where we were. <laughs> Don't remember where we were. At the hotel, the Double Tree Hotel. In uh, Double Tree, and I oh, forget how soon we forget how we had a great time. Wish I could leave the center caps off, but the wheels are scratched now. Not the center caps, the trim rings. The wheels are scratched from the trim ring gripping on. Those trim rings are a nuisance and they dent so easily. They look shiny. I would have rather had the chrome wheels, the chrome Magnum 500 style wheels. Okay, it's getting dark. I'm going to finish bleeding my brakes. Maybe work on that Cadillac one day.